Good day and welcome to the Air Industries Conference Call. Today's conference is being recorded. Air Industries Group Safe Harbor Statement. Except for the historical information contained herein, the matters discussed in this presentation contain forward-looking statements. The accuracy of these statements is subject to significant risks and uncertainties. Actual results could differ materially from those contained in the forward-looking statement. See the company's SEC filings on Forms 10-K and 10-Q for important information about the company and related risks. EBITDA is used as a supplemental liquidity measure because management finds it useful to understand and evaluate results, excluding the impact of non-cash depreciation and amortization charges, stock-based uh, compensation expenses, and non-recurring expenses and outlays prior to consideration of the impact of other potential sources and users of cash, such as working capital items. This calculation may differ in method of calculation from similarly titled measures used by other companies. At this time, I would like to turn the conference over to CEO Nuo Meluzzo. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Anita. Good morning, and thank you for joining us as we summarize Air Industries results for 2019. Our results for the year are much improved over 2018. Sales are up, gross profit is up, and expenses remain well controlled. Air Industries reported an operating profit for the first time in several years. Reported an operating profit for the first time in several years. A few high points from 2019 compared to 2018 are sales increased to $54.6 million. 10 million or 23% more than in 2018. Most profits increased by 3.7 million or 68%. Operating expenses were essentially flat. Adjusted EBITDA was 5.2 million, three times what it was in 2018. Our, our on-time delivery metrics improved across all metrics. Bookings were up 49.5%. The relationship with our supply chain improved dramatically. We have refinanced our credit line, replacing PNC Bank with Sterling National Bank. Our new credit facility, a combination of a revolving credit line and a term loan, has very favorable terms. The interest rate is less than half of what we were paying with PNC. The amortization of our term loan is much more favorable. The combination will reduce our cash needs by about $2.5 million a year. This is new found money we can reinvest in our operations. At this time, I would like to turn a call over to Michael Recca, our CFO, for a recap on the financial. Then I'll return to close the call. Mike? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, a couple of topics we want to discuss are gross profit, operating income, and net income, and the, a little more information on our sterling bank refinancing. You notice, as you said, gross profit is highly variable with sales. With sales. sales for the last year, 2019, were up 23% over the prior year, but our gross profit grew by 68%. So it really is an indication of the earning leverage of the company that our gross profit uh, increases at a faster rate than the increase in sales. And that's because as a manufacturing company, we have, uh, as sales go up, our manufacturing overhead is absorbed and spread over more, more dollars of sales, increasing gross profit. Operating income is very, very, uh, very satisfying for the year. In 2019, we had positive operating income and a greatly reduced net loss. Operating income for 2019 was $328,000, and this compares to a loss of 4.9, close to $5 million, loss for 2018. Now, to be fair, the loss in 2018 included a, a, an expense, a write-off of capitalized engineering of about $2 million. So perhaps a better comparison is income of $328,000 versus a loss of about $3 million. Uh, it's still a dramatic turnaround. Uh, our net loss from Continuing operations in 2019 was about $2.6 million, and that compared with an $8.5 million loss in 2018. So we reduced our loss by two-thirds. Uh, this continues a trend from, seven, from 2017, 2018, and now into 2019, and hopefully that will continue in 2020. Uh, as Lou mentioned, we at, on the 
December 31st, we replaced PNC Bank with Sterling National and dramatically reduced our interest rates. At PNC, we were paying about 9.5% for most of 2019, five over prime, uh, plus substantial quarterly renewal fees to keep them in place. At Sterling National, we're paying two points, two percentage points over 30-day LIBOR, and we're currently paying about 4%. There's a floor of 3.5% on the Sterling loan. Uh, with the Sterling loan, we paid off all of our capital leases and, and, and our term loans. We have one single term loan, and as Lou mentioned, this is going to free up about $2.5 million uh, in cash that we no longer need to, to uh, use to amortize that debt. Thank you, Mike. Let me close with a few thoughts on the remainder of the year. Our results for 2019 confirm that we have increased sales and margins. We have achieved both operating profitability and greatly reduced our loss compared to 2018. We are dedicated to continuing these trends. During 2019, we issued guidance that revenue would be 50 to 55 million with EBITDA in the five to five and a half million. We have achieved both goals. While we expect 2020 to exceed 2019 due to the uncertainty in the world today, we are not issuing guidance at this time. We will do so as soon as things stabilize. With that, this concludes our formal remarks this morning, and I would like to open the call. With that, this concludes our formal remarks this morning, and I would like to open the call. Uh, I would like to open the line for questions from participants. Anita, can you take uh, Thank you. Call, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. If you would like to ask a question on the phone, please signal by pressing star 1 on your telephone keypad. If you're using a speakerphone, please make sure your mute function is turned off to allow your signal to reach your equipment. A voice prompt on the phone line will indicate when the line is open. Please state your name before posing your question. Again, that's star 1 to ask a question. We have a question. Caller, your line is open. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning. Uh, this is John Mobile from Tagrish Brothers. Uh, uh, thanks for the call, and uh, thanks for taking my questions. Um, uh, I just have a few here. My first one, I was hoping that uh, that you could actually break out uh, your sales from defense-related sales versus commercial sales for 2019. If you have a, a rough estimate of that, that would be great. First, good morning, John. How are you? Good. How are uh, you? Good, good. Uh, John, we're we're about 80, 85 percent military, and uh, you know, 15 to 20, basically. And we'd call it 80, 20, something in that neighborhood of uh, military versus uh, uh, commercial. So we are not predominantly heavily on the military side. Okay, I just I just wanted to make sure. So about eighty percent military, twenty percent commercial. Now I, I expect I expected defense sales uh, to grow in twenty twenty. Uh, I believe commercial sales, given the current situation, will probably be under pressure, at least in the short term. But is there anything encouraging that uh, you may be able to say about the long term commercial sales from what you see at this point? Our involvement in the commercial side is really with uh, a, a couple of platforms. You know, I mean, we we are heavily into the gear turbo fan. Uh, that's the contract that that we published, uh, I believe, back at the beginning of the year. You know, for sixty million dollars of uh, five right. five year LPA going forward. Uh, uh, we don't expect that. Uh, at least from where we're sitting right now, we don't expect that to, to slow down dramatically. Uh, I think the need for that engine will, will be uh, hot, heavy in the future. Uh, so that, that's, a, that's a pretty stable platform to be on. Uh, we have uh, very little content on the, on the A380. Now, we know that the A380 is coming uh, to an end and at some point, and uh, we are, we are going to be wrapping that up. Uh, actually, we wrapped up our first contract, but we just got an extension. Uh, for another year, year and a half, at much favorable pricing that we've been doing this program, and, and uh, I, I don't see that being sidelined. So that that's not going to affect us that much. We have absolutely zero content on the 737. 
So that has had uh, that has had no impact on Air Industries or Sterling Engineering operations in any way, shape, or form. So our, our content on the commercial side uh, is is we're not at a great exposure, is what we're saying. Okay, well, that's great to hear. I just wanted to, to make sure I get some clarification on that end. But obviously, being uh, more heavily into defense, uh, right there is a little uh, defensive, if I could say it that way. And and uh, what is the current backlog? I know it, it's been uh, floating around $100 million. How, What is the current backlog, and how much of that is actually defense-related? Our current backlog, uh, 18-month funded backlog, resides at four, uh, 114.7, just under $115 million. And uh, of that, what would you put the pot? I put the defense more like 90%. Yeah. yeah. All the time, I was, it's, it's oh, okay, really great. Way to the defense side. Okay. And uh, one, one, one thing uh, being that you do have that, that much of a defense backlog, uh, uh, on the last call, you mentioned that you purchased uh, four horizontal lathes, and that was in an effort to remove some of the bottlenecks in shipping product. Could you come on, comment on the uh, status of those lathes and any further progress that uh, might have been made in alleviating the bottleneck? So we purchased two horizontal lathes. Uh, we purchased two. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I yeah, thought that was four. They made that horizontals at 4500s. And those machines are both fully operational, fully staffed, and they're running two shifts. And they, they work wonders with eliminating the bottlenecks through that area. And last year's CapEx also included a uh, large boring mill, a Karaki. Uh, also included a uh, large boring mill, a Karaki uh, horizontal boring mill, which we've just retrofitted. And that is also running uh, a commercial product on it right now, the A380 product. And that's kind of what we bought this thing for. Uh, all three pieces of equipment are 100% operational and staffed. Okay, so with these here, alleviating alleviating the uh, bottleneck, uh, one can at least anticipate, especially with the heavy defense spending, that uh, uh, th there should be a, a ramp up, uh, a sequential ramp up in sales from uh, at least from the fourth quarter. Uh, we we are uh, we are. Uh, forecasting a ramp up this year. Uh, obviously, there's a hiccup right now in the system with this virus. <laughs> we don't know how it's going to affect the supply base uh, and how it's going to affect the OEMs. I mean, uh, as of right now, uh, you know, there's uh, Boeing has, uh, has shut down a factory on the, on the West Coast. It doesn't have really have that much effect. You know, we're, we're seeing Airbus, I think, is closed in France for four or five days for a deep cleaning. MTU is working some some limited hours. Uh, EK and over in Sweden and Norway uh, are also working on a limited uh, on a limited schedule. Uh, we don't we don't know. I mean, the, the only given here is that the, if this thing blows over in a couple of weeks, which I don't know if that's the case or not. And obviously, our government can't can't uh, can give us more information. But uh, I, I can't see I can't see this thing being around for six months. Or We have hired some some personnel in Q1. Uh, we've you know we've had, we've added four people to day shift. We've added four people to night shift since December. So we are planning on a, on a ramp up. Okay. And, uh, what are and, um, in mind? Remember, we're different than a retail store or a, a restaurant. The demand, even if we have a, a delay in shipments because one of our customers closed. When they reopen, we can make up that difference. So, so okay. So you know, we we that, uh, no, we we are considered an essential business, John. So which means we're going to be open come uh, uh, open through this, and it would be our intent to keep uh, the machining operations going. Uh, and, okay. Uh, pretty much at all costs. And like uh, Mike just been saying, we, uh, you know, it's an opportunity to get ahead. Uh, even though you might not be able to ship the parts this week or next week, you will have those parts mm -hmm. to go when it's time. No, that, that's that's great to hear. I, that was my next question. I wanted to find out if, you, you know, you were considered an essential business where you still are operational. So that, that was uh, good to hear that. Uh, 
If I could switch gears here to uh, to, to interest rates here, uh, uh, the interest cost. Let's see, in 2019 it was about 3.6 million, and that was at an average rate of about nine and a half percent. Now, in light of the current rate being around or less than four percent. Uh, Mike, if I could ask you, what do you believe the interest expense will be in 2020 from what you see right now? It'll be down by about a million one hundred thousand dollars. Again, a million. Okay, so we were 3.6, but you're looking roughly, as you see now, maybe about two and a half million in, in that line. That's correct. Okay. And just uh, one final question, if there's anybody else, I'll leave it open for them. Uh, the Roth agreement uh, to date, how much was raised from that agreement? Oh, John, I'm glad you asked. Uh, that uh, the Roth agreement uh, opened up, we sold, we sold uh, shares for four days. Uh, you know, we raised about a million dollars. We literally sold 419,577 shares. So uh, that was it. You know, for, for okay, four, those 419,000 shares? That is, that's, that is, is that correct? correct. One, four, and that was approximately a million raised. All right, great. Uh, well, it's good to hear some, uh, some words of encouragement these days here from uh, what's happening in your business. Uh, that's all I have. Thanks for taking my call. I'll uh, leave it open to others. Thank you. Always a pleasure, John. Thank you for calling. Thank you. We have no further questions at this time, but once again, if you'd like to ask a question, please press star 1. It appears we have no further It appears we have no further questions at this time, sir. Okay. So with that, once again, thank you, everyone, for taking the time to be on this call today and for your attentions and questions. The management and employees of Air Industries look forward to continued growth in 2020. Anita, please close. Thank you, sir. This concludes today's call. Thank you for your participation. You may now disconnect.